Hi there, I am back with another video. I just did a drugstore haul video. Get this situated here. But I thought that I would do something a little bit more serious and I thought that maybe I could help others out in a different way. Um, I do love to do makeup. Um, I'm not a makeup artist at all. I just like to do it as a hobby. And I love buying makeup and I have a lot of makeup. But um, what I thought I would do is talk about something that I deal with and maybe give you some tools to help. Um, I'm 37 and when I was 24, I had my first panic attack. I'm just going to jump right in this. Um, and then it happened again about two weeks later and then they kept happening after that. So if you've ever had a panic attack, then you know that they are horrible. Um, they're probably one of the worst things that, um, you can have go on. I mean, to me, it just, the, the feeling of, the feeling of, um, like unreality and losing touch with reality and that I was going to have a heart attack and that things were never going to be normal. Um, those are the kind of the things that kind of run through my head. And, um, so, they, they just kind of started happening. Um, my grandmother, who passed in 2008, um, was diagnosed with agoraphobia many, many years ago. And um, if you don't know what that is, that's kind of a condition where the panic attacks um, kind of keep you inside. Um, she was afraid to go places. She would come over um, sometimes, or, you know, we would go over there, which she's perfectly fine with, but she, when she would come over to, like, say, my mom's house, um, when we were younger, she, she just, she wouldn't, you know, she'd kind of stay for a little bit, but then she'd make up an excuse to have to go. I never really understood it until I started having the panic attacks myself. Um, so that kind of started happening in the summer, and so the whole summer was, going to doctors and figure, figuring out what's wrong with me because I am a very outgoing, happy, happy-go-lucky, don't worry about anything type person. So this was really hard for me because um, it's just something that really inhibited me and it kind of, you know, made me feel like I wasn't going to be able to do the things that I had always done. Um, so anyways, um, I was put on some medications after that. And I was not as knowledgeable as I am now. Um, I did a lot of research on online, and I sort of ha started having these really weird feelings, like when not when I would be having a panic attack, but I could be driving down the road and look at trees and think. And I remember, you know, thinking those are trees. What are trees? You know, just this really weird kind of feeling out of touch with yourself, I, it's really hard to describe, but, um, you know, I, I looked it up online, did so much research, and found out that um, depersonalization uh, really fit me. And so I was having those episodes. So the, the more that I researched those, the more I found out that it kind of goes along with panic attacks, anxiety, depression. Um, I was also diagnosed with depression. Um, and I think that the depression goes hand in hand with um, the panic attacks and the anxiety. I haven't had a panic attack in probably, I can't, re I can't even remember my last one. I mean, it's been years and years. Um, I have had anxiety issues and I was diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder and of course depression um, and also dysthymia, which um, dysthymia is where you kind of have a low grade depression every single day or a lot of days out of the week and you don't really feel like up or down. Um, it's just kind of like an even depression, I guess, um, is what you could call it. But I have done so much research over the years. About seven years ago, I had a really bad night. Um, I don't even remember what triggered it, but I don't know if it was a panic attack or what exactly it was, but I was home with my son and I felt like the world was coming to an end and I called the ambulance on myself. I had the thoughts in my head that I didn't want to live anymore. Um, so the ambulance came. 
Um, and luckily my cousin just happened to be driving by at that time and saw that my apartment buildings, that there were um, ambulances there. So she stopped just to check which, and it was my place. So um, she was able to take my son. Um, they took me to the hospital, gave me some Ativan and some stuff to calm down. But I ended up being taken to um, the behavioral health hospital here. So the psych ward, the insane asylum, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, but that's not how it was, you know, and I know that you see on movies and TV these places and, you know, they're locked and they're crazy and you're in a cell or whatever it is, you know, that's the typical, um, typical things that you see on TV. It's not like that. Um, maybe it is some places, but it's not here. Um, the hospital is huge amazing doctors, many groups. Um, they have a personal chef that, or chefs that make the food. Um, but anyway, so I ended up staying there for 11 days. Um, I did a lot of different psychological tests. I did a lot of different groups, such as meditation groups, art therapy groups. Um, what else did I do? Art therapy, music therapy, just, I um, mean, every night at nine o'clock, we would go into this one room and we'd all bring a pillow or a blanket and we would relax and listen to um, a guided meditation. So if you've heard of guided, med if you know what guided meditations are, it's where, you know, you kind of go through and listen to somebody talking and telling you, um, you know, to relax or to go through each part of your body, start at your toes and relax your toes or start at your head and relax your head and just kind of go down, 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 down. And then your whole body just feels amazing. Or, you know, it's painting a different picture, um, in your head, kind of taking you out of your head for a little bit. So with that being said, um, I have dealt with this for 17 years now. <laughs> wow. It makes me feel really old. Um, so, you know, like I said, i I, um, I work full time. I raise my son. Um, I am able to do everything. And um, I think it's a lot because of coping skills. And, you know, when they, t when they tell you about coping skills, you know, you got to change the way that your brain thinks. Um, you know, it's weird, but that's so true because then your brain kind of automatically takes over. And that's kind of what happens to me. Um, not to say that I don't worry now. I worry about everything. I worry about things going on overseas. I worry about um, murders. I mean, just all this stuff. I, I, you know, scared of storms. Just all this stuff that, you know, is just, I don't know. But it's just really hard to explain. Um, but if you've dealt with anxiety and depression and panic attacks, then you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, I would say that my depression, even though it's been considered bad, is not debilitating because I refuse to let that happen. I, even if I'm feeling down, I go to work, um, no matter how down I'm feeling. Because if I stay home and just sit around, that's not going to help anything. So um, I, really, I really do a lot to try and help myself. Um, one of the things I do is yoga. And yoga is amazing and I just do, I do six poses before bed and then I do some during the day or in the evening, I mean, um, a little bit before bed and then I also um, do them right when I wake up in the morning. Um, so I just kind of wanted to share my story a little bit. There's a lot more to it. I've been through a lot um, and I'm still here and I am still kicking and I'm thriving, I think, and um, so I wanted to just give some help and some coping tips and things that I do to help myself. Um, so let's get into that. I like to go to the bookstore and the bookstore we have here is Barnes and Noble. I mean, we have different bookstores, but that's the main one that I go to and I like the bargain section. I like it because they have these little books and everything's backwards on here, but they have these little books and anything that I can use to take my mind off of things for a while, you know, if it's been a really rough day, um, I just really like to do little things like this. And this one is called 642 Tiny Things to Write About. And it says, by the San Francisco Writer's Grotto. So what this is, is um, you open it up, and this is a tiny book, and it's got different things in here. 
Um, like it says here, I'll just read some on one page. It says, write the confession of a man who killed his best friend by accident. That's probably not the best one if you worry about stuff. Oops, I didn't really pick a very good one. Ooh, I'm not going to read that next one either. Gosh, I didn't know that was in here. Um, okay. How about this? Um, you open your fridge and realize someone has replaced all your food with things you hate to eat. Describe what's in there. And so it gives you, you know, space to write. And it's just little things and you don't have to write a whole book or anything like that. But, you know, little things like these, even if I do one of them a night, you know, it's something that kind of takes my mind off of things and makes me forget about the day and um, just kind of helps out. Um, another thing that I got in that section is this book here and it's 300 writing prompts um, I I get blocked brain sometimes I guess you call it and you can probably see in my videos I'm like uh, and I tend to forget or I forget where I'm at see I'm doing it right now <laughs> anyway so this one here gives you ideas of things to write about and if you don't like to journal this would be a really good option um, so it's like this and has questions at the top and it gives you space to write. One of the questions is write about an item you own that is not worth much money but has great value to you. So it kind of gets your brain thinking and then you can write about these or write about it. Um, what is the biggest stressor in your life? Well, that would be hard because I have so many. Um, Oh, another one here. I've had this one for a long time, and of course it's backwards. Um, 365 ways to energize mind, body, and soul. And um, mindfulness. And uh, honestly, mindfulness is really good for treating depression and anxiety. Um, mindfulness provides a simple but powerful route for getting ourselves unstuck, but back in touch with our own wisdom and vitality. And wow, that is true. Um, another thing in here is eat to energize and tells you berries, fruits, vegetables, melons. Um, it says when you're feeling fatigued, try a short nap for about 30 minutes. Don't fall asleep. Simply, simply close your eyes and rest. This brief time of stillness rejuvenates your mind and body. So it's kind of a neat book. And I don't know, am I the only one? I'm just weird. Like I like these little tiny books and, you know, like, I don't know. There's something that comforts me, you know, have, I don't know. It's probably really weird, but anybody else like them? <laughs> um, another thing that I do is journal. I'm not very good at journaling. But when I'm going through a tough time and my depression seems to be kind of, my mood seems to be down more, I tend to go out and buy a new journal because I'm thinking in my head, I'm going to go buy a pretty little journal and then I'm going to journal all the time. Well, it seems like I only journal when I'm not feeling very well in the head. So <laughs> when I'm feeling really down, then I tend to journal. So I have journals from a long time ago. I've never filled a journal. Um, my newest cute one is says live the life you've imagined. And you can see in here I've done some writing. Uh, and it's funny because this one, the first page was July 10th of 2014. And the last one I wrote was a really long one. Um, June 24th, 2015. And if you want to see how many pages I've written, <laughs> it's like this. That's like over a year. And I've hardly written anything. And so I keep telling myself, I need to start doing this every night. I need to do this every night. But, you know, it just doesn't, doesn't seem to happen. And only when I'm not feeling good, which, you know, that helps um, at that time too. But does anybody else journal? Um, okay, next thing. One of the things that we did when I was in the hospital was art therapy. And so uh, I don't know, it's been kind of all over lately about these adult coloring books. Well, I've had this one for quite a while. It's a mandala coloring book. And this one they have at Hobby Lobby, if you have those around you. Um, but what they are, are pages that you can color. And here's some of the blank ones. And they're really fun. I like to use skinny tipped markers for this one. But right here on the front, it says inspire creativity, reduce stress, and bring balance with 100 mandala coloring pages. And then even in the inside, in the introduction, it says, um, 
The simple act of coloring in the 100 mandalas found throughout this book will help you enter the man maybe I'm not saying that right, mandala, ma mandala, and enjoy some real therapeutic and physical benefits, including relaxation, a sense of well-being, increased focus, increased activity, increased creativity, reduced blood pressure, reduced stress and anxiety. So it says, how does this work? Coloring forces your mind to focus on the task at hand. So it's kind of a distraction. Um, but what it basically says for the instructions in this book, which is pretty cool, is to kind of flip through. And then you look at one and you say, gosh, you know, I really, I'm feeling this one tonight. Or I'm not feeling this one tonight. And I've done a lot of coloring in this book. Um, here's another one. Um, but... I really, really like this book, and I know that you can order it, I think, on, like, Amazon or eBay or bookstores. Um, a friend of mine actually went and got this one after I got it. She deals with some of the same stuff, but that's one of the coloring books. And the next one that I more recently got in the last couple weeks is The Secret Garden, and this one is really, really pretty inside, and then it has kind of, it has some activities, but... Here's kind of like one of what one of the pages looks like. Here's other ones. Um, the one I'm working on right now is this one right here. And it's really detailed. So it takes forever to color. So, you know, like I pick a color and do that one before bed. And um, then it kind of distracts me that way. Um, I did when go out and buy a 50 box colored pencils and I have minus the receipt this box here of markers all different colors all different colored color pencils um, different brands just a whole bunch and so one of the main things I do what I like to do is coloring so I do that at night too before bed um, another thing I do use is aromatherapy. I really like that. Um, one of the relaxation, um, like, guided meditations that I use is called The Secret Garden. And I think that you can download it on iTunes. You can go to, I think it's, um, just Google The Secret Garden Meditation. And I think that if you sign up with your email address that you can listen to that one as much as you want for free. They played that one when I was in the hospital, and that is my very favorite one. The lady's voice is amazing, and um, she just guides you through. And honestly, I can picture the garden. As she goes through and has you kind of make it in your head, and I can always picture that if I need to. So those are just some of the things that um, I do. Um, I also, you know, when you're having an anxiety or panic attack, you know, you just want to keep telling yourself that, you're not going to be stuck like that, that things are going to get better. Um, because like, I mean, I'm living proof, you know, and I've, I've come from a lot. I just recently, within the last year have dealt with a blood clot that almost killed me. Um, that was in my lungs and I've had a hysterectomy and I was diagnosed just recently in the last month with a blood clotting disorder. So, um, I've been hit with a lot of really hard stuff lately medically. Um, but I am still doing good and you know what? They say fake it till you make it and honestly when people meet me, they would never ever know that I deal with depression, anxiety, or any of that because I'm just always a very upbeat person and that's just what a lot of people always tell me and I'm always laughing and trying to make others laugh and, um, so, you know, just, I mean, truly fake it till you make it. Um, one last piece of advice if you're not allergic is to get a cat or a dog this is my cat Olivia and she is the best cat ever um she was just sleeping by me she's always by me and she's always when she's laying down by me um at night she always reaches out a paw and she's got to touch me somehow she'll sleep above my head on my pillow and then she reach out a paw and touch my head um, she's just, she's so loving and she's a calico. She's so pretty. And I was just laying in bed last night thinking, God, what would I do without her? She's just so amazing. So if you can find a good cat, <laughs> she loves her ears rubbed, then, and you're not allergic, I say go for it because they are amazing. I mean, look at these paws. Look at those paws. 
But anyways, I thought that I would maybe do, you know, another video or so about this subject. Um, I have a lot more that I can advice that I can give. Um, if you have any questions, you can um, write them for me down below and I will try and answer them. Um, if you want to subscribe, um, I'll do all sorts of videos. Again, I have a lot of experience in this. I do the makeup videos too, but um, again, I don't have any subscribers really yet. I think my son, but if you want to subscribe and just let me know what you want to see, I will do it. Um, the blood clotting disorder that I have is antiphospholipid syndrome. So if you have that and you have any questions, um, I can try and help out with that. Um, yeah, so if you want to subscribe, let me know if you have any other questions. Um, I'm really good to talk to, I guess. <laughs> so just let me know, and I hope that you guys all have a stress-free and relaxing night. Um, bye!